Hello all. Ubiquity is a PHP full stack framework, based on the MVC design pattern. If you have already used another MVC framework like Symfony, Laravel, Codeigniter, or another, you will not be really disoriented, and the learning process will be fast. The objective of this session is to create a first project, then to understand the basic principles related to controllers and views. From your command prompt, check the PHP version. Ubiquity requires PHP version 7.4 at least, version 8 is recommended. Also check the version of Composer, and make sure you are using Composer too. Upgrade your versions if necessary. Let's start by installing Ubiquity DevTools from the command line. This step is not an obligation, but will allow to use DevTools globally, on several projects. Now let's test the Ubiquity command. If it is not found, as is the case here, add the path to the compose bin folder in the Windows path variable. Add the path to the composer bin folder. Then validate your choices. Consider opening a new command prompt to test again. If you see the version numbers, Everything is fine. Let's move on to the creation of our first project. It is possible to create a project from the newly installed DevTools, or from the Composer Create Project command. The Create Project command does not require a prior global installation of the DevTools. It installs the DevTools and WetTools within the created project. From the command prompt, Go to your working folder, and run the command. If necessary, change the name of the project to be created. Composer installs the required dependencies, and those of the dev part. The installation ends with the initialization of the cache. Go to the project folder, then start the built-in PHP server. The server uses by default the port 8090. You can now test your application in the browser. And it works. You can also test the web tools, and configure them by choosing the tools to be displayed, during this first use. The web tools allow you to execute the main basic commands of the framework in a web interface. Most of these commands are also available in the command prompt, with the dev tools. We can now continue with the next step, the creation of a first controller. If necessary, restart the integrated web server, and check that your application is working. If everything is ok, you can start your favorite development environment, PHP Storm in this case, and open the first project. Your project is structured as follows. The app folder contains your future source code, 
structured into models, controllers, and views. This structure is simple, and suitable for small projects. The public folder contains the assets, and any static files. The vendor folder contains the libraries installed with Composer. We will create our first controller from DevTools. Open a terminal, and look for help on the controller command by typing. Ubiquity. Help. Controller. The help command returns information on how to use the controller command. You can now enter. Ubiquity. Controller. Hello controller. To create the hello controller. The controller is created in the folder app backslash controllers. Open it, and modify the index method to display the message hello world. Tradition dictates. Ubiquity does not respect PSR7, so you don't have a response object and can write directly to the stream with the PHP echo function. Oops, I forgot to turn off my notifications. Test the result in the browser at slash hello controller. Note that the address slash hello controller slash index returns the same result, since the index method is the default action of a controller. If you view the source of the response, you can see that the page contains more than just the hello world message. This is preceded by a header, and followed by a footer. This is because hello controller inherits from controller base. And that controller base defines initialize and finalize methods, called before and after each action respectively. Initialize loads the header view, and finalize loads the footer view. This default mechanism can of course be modified, by choosing another base controller, or by redefining the initialize and finalize methods. Now let's modify the header file by adding an h1 title, and see the result. Now let's add a new action to hello controller this time associated with a view. The V option of the action command will automatically create this view. The associated view is created in the app slash views slash hello controller folder under the name action with view.html. It is a twig view, the template engine associated by default with Ubiquity. Let's add a level 2 title to the template, and test the result in the browser. This new action is accessed at slash hello controller slash action with view. We saw together that the action of a controller creates a new URL, with the form controller name slash action name. We will now add a new action with parameters. The action with params is created with two parameters, type and message. These two parameters will be passed in the URL, following hello controller slash action with params. We pass these two parameters to the view, in the form of an associative array. Each key in this array creates a variable of the same name in the view. The view will therefore allow access to the type and message variables. 
Note that we could have used the compact function to create this associative array from the variables type and message. Let's now modify the view. To display variables you must use the twig syntax. A reference to a variable is surrounded by a pair of braces, as in many other template engines. The result will not be very beautiful, but that is not the point. Let's go back to the browser to test our page. It is accessible at slash hello controller slash action with param slash type slash message, where type and message will be replaced by the values of our choice. Let's try several values for type and message. If one of our parameters contains HTML, it will not be interpreted in the page, using Twig's automatic protection against XSS attacks. If the required number of parameters is not correct, in this case, we delete message, the framework generates an exception. If we want to make the message part of the URL optional, we must give a default value to message, in the method declaration. The default message is displayed, if the URL does not specify message. The message is also displayed if it is passed to the URL again. Let's take a look at the web tools at slash admin. The controller part allows to see our controller and the actions created. The get button associated with each action allows you to test the get method on the action. The result is slightly different from the previous ones, since in this case the request is in Ajax, and the header and footer are not loaded. The last action has a required parameter, which must be filled in. It is also possible to create actions or controllers from the web tools. For the example, here we create a new action, with two parameters, one of which is optional, and a view. The action is created in the controller, it remains to modify it to pass param1 to the view. Let's modify the view so that it displays the variable p1. Next, let's test how it works in the web tools. Let's go back to the code to modify it. We will see that it is possible for an action to invoke several views. The first view displays param1, the second will display param2.
Note that this example has no specific purpose, other than to show this possibility. The dev tools show that we solicit a view that does not yet exist. We create it from a copy of the first view. The dev tools reflect the change well, and allow us to test the functioning again. To sum up, a controller is a class defining actions. It inherits from a base class which defines part of its behavior. This is the case of the initialize and finalize methods for example. An action is a public method of the controller, it defines one or more URLs. The default action is the index method, accessible via the URLs slash hello controller and slash hello controller slash index. This routing system is known as default routing. URLs are defined as slash controller name slash action name slash parameters. According to this principle, the action action with params defines the following URL. Slash hello controller slash action with params slash type. Slash hello controller slash action with params slash type slash message. An action can use one or more views, and pass variables to them, via an associative array. The keys of the associative array define the variables available in the view. By convention, a view associated with an action has the name of the action, and is located in a folder with the name of the controller, within the views folder. That's all for today, thank you for your attention. Next time, we'll talk about annotation or attribute routing.